This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. We are happy to share that the Tamil version of this video reached more than a lakh views and 1.9k likes. So far, I have explained the effects of the planets in different houses, right from Aries to Leo, and I can see really a huge appreciation from all my subscribers. I really appreciate the learning interest of my subscribers. I never post videos about Rashifal, that is Rasipalan, effects of the planet. Only in certain situations, it is unavoidable to publish such videos during the occasion of Jupiter transit or Saturn transit. The reason why I'm not interested is that these are not going to express the accurate predictions. This is the reason I really hesitate to post videos about planetary transit. I avoid publishing these sort of videos despite a lot of requests from my subscribers. I would say almost 90% of my subscribers request Rashifal from me and the same was expected from TV channels as well. There are certain situations that I cannot avoid so I get involved in programs about planetary transit in few TV channels. Yet. On my personal request, you can see some 5 minutes of a video in Sun Life channel is dedicated to teaching the astrology. The TV channel allotted that 5 minute slot on my request as I wanted to teach astrology to the viewers in addition to Rashifal program. As the Rasipalan predictions does not apply 100% for an individual. I don't prefer to publish the planetary transit effects in our YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to explain about the effects of planets in Virgo. This is the sixth house in the natural zodiac. The sixth house of the natural zodiac represents deaths, diseases and the enemies. The Virgo sign also represents the digestive system which includes the intestines and spleen. The house of Virgo is a dual sign. I believe that I have not mentioned the body part for each sign so far. I missed certain points when I explained about the effects of the planets for other houses in my videos. The sign of Virgo is the sixth house in the natural zodiac and the sign of Virgo represents the digestive system, pancreas, intestines, etc. The sixth house of the natural zodiac is sign of Virgo and it represents the intelligence. This is a female sign and this is a dual sign. You know there are three categories of the signs. The first one is fixed signs, the second one is mobile signs and the third one is dual signs. And the house of Virgo belong to the dual sign. The sign represents the duality and the house lord Mercury also represents duality. The planet represents two states of mind. I often say that this house represents a dual state of mind. Among the classification of Panjabodha Tattva, this sign represents the land. The house of Magar, that is Capricorn, represents the marsh lands. I hope you know that the signs are classified based on the Panjabodha Tattva such as fire, land, air and water. There are three signs that are classified as land. They are Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. That is Rishabh, Kanya and Makar. All these concepts are very important and will be helpful while we make predictions. The Virgo sign is a female sign. Cancer is female sign and the Leo sign is male sign. And the subsequent sign to Leo is again female sign. 
This is a combination of Chara Rashi, Thira Rashi, that is movable sign and fixed sign. There are four padas in the sign right from Uttram, that is Uttra Falguni, second pada, until Chitrai, that is Chitra, second pada. In Leo, there are nine padas of the three stars right from Magam, that is Magar, until the first pada of Uttram, that is Uttra Falguni. Let me repeat. There are first pada, second pada, third pada and fourth pada of Magar, that is Magam, and first pada, second pada, third pada and fourth pada of Puram, that is Purva Falguni, and the first pada of Uttra Falguni, that is Uttram, in the house of Leo. In the house of Virgo, there are second pada, third pada and fourth pada of Uttiram, that is Uttara Falguni, then first pada, second pada, third pada and fourth pada of Hastam, that is Hasta, and first pada, second pada of Chittirai, that is Chitra. Therefore, in every sign in the natural zodiac, there will be nine padas of three different stars. Or in other words, I can say that there are two and quarter stars in each house. In general, the Virgo sign represents the intelligence, whereas the wisdom or knowledge is represented by the house of Gemini. The Virgo sign represents education. This is the house where Mercury attains threefold status, the own house status, Mool Trikona status and exaltation status. Mercury is the only planet that can attain Three stages, that is Moultricon, Exaltation and Own House, in the very same house, which is the house of Virgo. The Moultricon status is from 16 degrees to 20 degrees and Mercury gets exalted at 15 degrees. I have explained a lot about house of Virgo in my past videos. This is a very important house and I will explain first of all the significance of this house now. For all the 12 ascendants, Venus will have the own house status in the quadrant house. You know that Venus is meant for pleasures. This is the reason why Venus will have own house status in the quadrant house for all the 12 ascendants in the natural zodiac. As pleasure is a common entity that everybody enjoys, for all the ascendants, the house of Venus will be a quadrant house to the ascendant. I repeat, for all the ascendants in the natural zodiac, the house of Venus will definitely be a quadrant house to the ascendant. Mercury is the only planet that represents intelligence and gets own house status or the exaltation status only for four ascendants in the natural zodiac. Only for the natives of Sagittarius ascendant, Pisces ascendant, Gemini ascendant and Virgo ascendant, Mercury will attain own house status or exaltation status in the quadrant. I have explained about the concept of the debilitation and exaltation in my article titled, Is Your Horoscope a Fortunate One? I have explained about the intricacies behind the concept of exaltation and the debilitation. Sun, which is said to be a father planet, get exalted in the very first house in the natural zodiac. The sun is the most significant planet of all the planets. Therefore, this is the reason the very first house of the natural zodiac is the house where sun gets exalted. The second house of the natural zodiac, which is Taurus or Rishabh, is the house where the planet moon that represents the mother gets exalted. The first house represents husband and the second house represents wife. So the predominant luminary planets, the planets which represents father and mother, the sun and the moon, gets exalted in the very first two houses of the natural zodiac. 
I have explained all these concepts in my articles. Let me not add further to this and let me continue with the house of Virgo. The house that represents bed pleasure is the house where Venus gets exalted and Mercury gets debilitated. This signifies that there is no space for intelligence where the thirst for carnal pleasures is at its peak. The intelligence fades when a man craves for carnal pleasures. This is the reason that Mercury gets debilitated where Venus gets exalted in the house of Pisces. For a person whose intelligence is at its highest level, the carnal pleasure is of no importance. Based on this concept, Mercury gets exalted here that represents intelligence and Venus gets debilitated in the house of Virgo. This signifies that there is no space for materialistic and carnal pleasures where the intelligence is at its higher level. To represent this, Venus gets debilitated here. Venus gets debilitated in the house of Virgo, which is the sixth house in the natural zodiac. By knowing these concepts of astrology as a next level, you can learn more about the intricacies of astrology. Though I have mentioned about all these in my articles, at some places it is really necessary to teach you all these in my videos. I observe that many people are interested to hear from me rather than reading my articles. This perception is a reflection of the comments that I receive for my videos published in the YouTube. So, the sign of Virgo is a dual house. This represents Panjabodha Tattva, land and female sign. The stars that reside in the house of Virgo is Uttra Falguni or Uttiram, Second Pada, Third Pada and Fourth Pada, Hastam or Hasta, First Pada, Second Pada, Third Pada and Fourth Pada and the third star Chittirai or Chitra, First Pada and Second Pada. The planet that can attain the Multricone status, the Exalted status and the own house status in its own house is Mercury. Venus is friendly to Mercury and of course Rahu is also friendly to Mercury. Venus, Mercury, Saturn and Rahu belongs to a team. The house of Virgo is an auspicious house to all these four planets. If the house of Virgo is very strong, the native will be very educated, very intelligent and knowledgeable. This house represents the educational and the astronomical knowledge. The Virgo sign will be strong in the natal chart of those who are working in Indian Space Research Organization or in NASA and those who work related to the domain of physics. The person may work related to astrology if the house of Virgo is strong. If the Mercury is in the quadrant to the moon, it is very significant and the person will work in the field of astrology. If you are watching my video for learning purpose, definitely in your chart the moon and the mercury will be strong. Not everyone watches my video, right? You all know that there are certain unnecessary news that goes viral in the television channels that goes as flash news for a week or so. There are many YouTube channels that talks more about these news and gets lakhs of views. Despite all these sensational news that goes viral in TV channels and YouTube videos, if you are choosing to watch this video of mine, then the Mercury should be in quadrant house to the moon in your natal chart or the moon and the Mercury will be strong in your natal chart. Only those whose Mercury is strong will excel in the fields of astrology, astronomy and fields related to physics. The sign of Virgo represents duality. You will be a rationalist, you will be a scientist and you will be also a spiritual person. 
Let me now explain the effects of different planets in the sign of Virgo. Let me explain when the nine planets can deliver benefits, when it resides in the house of Virgo and which position of the planet will help the native of Virgo ascendant. Let me start to explain about the planet Sun. When Sun resides in the Virgo, again the duality reflects. Mercury treats Sun as its friend, whereas Sun does not treat Mercury as a friend. It is a neutral status. When Sun resides in the house of Virgo, it is the second house from its own house Leo. It resides in the house of Virgo, whose house lord Treat sun as a friend. When the sun resides in the house of Virgo, it is the sixth house of the natural zodiac. The sun is actually heading towards the debilitation status because you know that sun gets debilitated in the house of Libra. Therefore, when it resides in Virgo, it is heading towards its debilitation status. Therefore, when sun resides in the house of Virgo, it is beneficial to certain extent and it will not give worse effects. Sun resides in the house of Virgo when the month is Puratashi, that is Bhadrapath, mid-September to mid-October. The house of Virgo is neutral house to the sun. Sun is heading towards debilitation status where it is going to lose its strength. So, the house of Virgo is the preceding house to the house of debilitation and it is the second house from the own house of the sun Leo. Therefore, when sun resides in the house of Virgo with Subhatva, it is really good and there will not be any worse effects. Now, let me explain about the effects of the moon when it resides in the sign of Virgo. I have already insisted that while predicting the effect of the moon, you have to definitely take into account the light energy of the moon. I am sharing you all the knowledge that I gained through my experience of many many years and to the extent that Almighty had permitted me to explore. If you are going to follow my path to make predictions, definitely it will be very accurate. Whether you are going to become an astrologer or whether you are aspiring to learn astrology, definitely these concepts will be very helpful to you. Try to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon. Check whether it is waxing moon or waning moon. In any case, moon should not be Amavasya when it resides in the house of Virgo. When moon is closely heading towards Amavasya or during Amavasya, the moon will spoil the house where it resides. I have mentioned this point in one of my videos. If it is full moon, then it will make the house where it resides Subhatva. There is no inimical house for the moon in the natural zodiac. Moon has the house of own status and house of exaltation, but it does not have inimical house. Therefore, when moon resides in the house of Virgo, it is in the third house to its own house Cancer. If the moon residing in the house of Virgo is Panguni Uttram, that is Falguna Uttra, that is mid-March to mid-April Uttra, it is very very auspicious. Then the person will be extremely intelligent as the moon will be Chandra Adiyoga. Let me explain what Chandra Adiyoga means. When the natural benefits, Jupiter, Venus and Mercury falls evenly in 6th house, 7th house and 8th houses from the moon, Chandra Adiyoga is formed. During Falguna Uttra, that is Panguni Uttiram, the sun will reside in the house of Pisces. The sun might be in Aquarius, Pisces or in the Aries. So during the Panguni Uttram, that is Falguna Uttra, the moon will be in the status of full moon. In this situation, in most of the cases, the Mercury and the Venus will reside in the 6th house or the 7th house from the moon, that is the sign of Virgo when it is full moon. 
So on the occasion of Panguni Uttiram, that is Falguna Uttara, when moon is full moon, then it strengthens both the house of Virgo and the planet lord of the house of Virgo. So in whatever house the moon resides, you have to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon, whether it is waxing moon or waning moon or Amavasya. In a nutshell, when moon resides in the house of Virgo, it is good. When moon resides in the house of Virgo, that is Kanya, it resides in the sixth house of the natural zodiac and the third house from its own house Cancer. If moon resides in house of Virgo during the month of Aipasi, that is Ashwin and heading towards Diwali, then it is not good. Two or three days before Aipasi Amavasya, that is when moon is heading towards closely to Amavasya, it will reside in the house of Virgo. If moon resides in the second pada of Chitra, then it is not auspicious at all, it is not good. It means the moon has reached the darkness and it will spoil the house of Virgo. There is one more extra point that I would like to mention here. When moon resides in the house of Virgo, it can reside in three possible nakshatras, Uttra Falguni, Hasta, Chittara, that is Uttiram, Hastam and Chittirai. The nakshatra lord of these stars are the sun, the moon itself and the Mars. If the moon resides in the nakshatra Uttra Falguni, that is Uttiram, then the nakshatra lord is the sun, which is a friendly planet to the moon. If the moon resides in the star of Hasta, that is Hastam, then nakshatra lord of Hasta is the moon. So the moon will reside in its own nakshatra lord. And when moon resides in Chittirai, that is Chitra, the nakshatra lord will be Mars, which is also friendly to the moon. So all the nakshatra lord, where the moon can reside in the house of Virgo, is friendly to the planet moon. So when moon resides in house of Virgo, you have to make predictions based on light energy of the moon and the nakshatra lord of the moon. I always suggest to my subscribers to make predictions based on the concept of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength of the planet and to forget about the number of the house or the bhava. You have to make predictions based on which house the house of Virgo is to the ascendant. See whether you are born in the month of Aipasi that is Ashwin where the moon is heading towards Amavasya. Or if it is Amavasya in the month of Puratasi, that is Badrapad, then it is not really good at all. In this case, if the moon is Amavasya moon during the month of Puratasi or Badrapad, either Jupiter or Venus should make the moon Subhatva. Even the lone Mercury will not help in this case, because the Mercury will be spoiled by the connection of the Amavasya moon. So in brief, when the moon is Amavasya and residing in the house of Virgo, it will not deliver good effects at all. The moon which is heading towards Amavasya will not deliver benefits. That is why I already mentioned that in order to understand the effect of the planet moon, you have to definitely understand the light energy of the moon. Even if it is waning moon, that is the moon which is going away from the full moon, until Panjami Tidi, the moon will have light energy. So you can make predictions based on this point. Therefore, until Panjami Tidi, you can consider the moon as waxing moon. So please try to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon. No house in the natural zodiac is enemical to the moon, and therefore, when it resides in the house of Virgo, it is good, though if it is in conjunction with Mercury. What would happen if it is in conjunction with Mercury? You have to make predictions like a son is in a very good status with the mother, whom Mercury is the only planet that can attain three status, that is Mool Trikon, Exaltation and Own House status, 
in the same house, that is house of Virgo. The mole trichon status is from 16 to 20 degrees and Mercury gets exalted at 15 degrees in the sign of Virgo. When Mercury is in conjunction with the moon, the moon will remain the same since moon is a motherly planet. Therefore, when moon resides in the house of Virgo, it will deliver benefits according to the strength of its own light energy. If the moon resides in Virgo and heading towards full moon, then the native will be extremely intelligent. The native of Virgo Rashi will be an all-rounder and will be very eloquent, yet there will be a dual state of mind. Secondarily, they will possess half-baked knowledge in all the fields. Due to too much of inquisitiveness, the moon in the house of Virgo will make the native of Virgo Rashi to learn all the subjects in the world but possess half-baked knowledge. The Virgo sign and the Mercury planet reflects the duality of the mind. Now, let me explain the next planet, Mars. There is a proverb in Tamil, Kanni chavvai kadalayum vatravaikum. This means, when Mars resides in the house of Virgo, it will dry even an ocean. I suggest not to listen to all these proverbs. The true concept behind this is, when Mars resides in the house of Virgo, it is from the sixth house to its own house Aries. As per Bhavat Bhavam, the Mars will reside in the sixth house from its own house Aries, and resides in the 11th house from Scorpio and the 11th house placement is considered as equal house position. Mars will reside in the house whose planet lord it does not like at all. The sign of Virgo becomes the 6th house for the natural zodiac as well and the 6th house for Aries as well. When a planet resides in a trine or the quadrant from its own house, then it is auspicious. When the planet loses its strength, when it resides in the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house from its own house or even 3rd house, then it will be in an uncomfortable state. So when you want to predict the effect of the planet, you also have to check the Bhavat Bhava. So when Mars is in the 6th house from the Aries, it is not a good position. There are many exceptions as well. When the native is Aries ascendant and Mars is in the 6th house from Aries, it is really good because when the ascendant lord is malefic, it is good that it is in the 6th house from its own house. And when Mars resides in the house of Virgo, it aspects its own house by its 8th aspect. If Mars is residing in the house of Virgo and it is in the 6th house from its own house Aries, we have to make predictions based on the strength of the Mercury, which is a house lord of Virgo. Based on the strength of the dispositor, you have to make the prediction. If there is a planet in the house, you have to check where the house lord is. And based on the strength of the dispositor, you have to make the prediction. Let us say there are some planets in the house of Virgo. The next step that you have to analyze is, you have to check the status of the house lord that is dispositor. I have already explained the situation with an example in one of my videos. Imagine if you are a tenant in a poor man's house and if there is a problem and when police reaches your house, they will not hesitate to pull you out of your house. Whereas when you are tenant in a rich man's house, for example, in an MLS house, then the police will hesitate to pull you out of your house. This is the importance of the strength of the dispositor, that is the house lord. So your dignity gets improved or lessened based on in which house you reside as a tenant. Because there are many ways that a person gains dignity in the society. If a planet that resides in the house of Virgo is supposed to deliver benefits or worse effects, then the house lord of Virgo should be strong. In a nutshell, when Mars resides in the house of Virgo, it is not good because it resides in the 6th house 
or 11th house from its own house that is 6th house from Aries and 11th house from Scorpio. It is already in an uncomfortable state since it treats Mercury as an enemy. In case if the planet Mercury is in Miduna that is Gemini in its own house then it is good. It is sort of Subhatva. When Mars gains Subhatva by the connection with Jupiter or Venus then it delivers benefits. There will not be any worse effects at all. Eventually you have to check definitely the Subhatva and Pabhatva of the planet which is very useful for accurate predictions. Well this is question time and this time I am going to ask you a very simple question. Among the two houses of Mercury, Gemini and Virgo, which house represents the educational knowledge? Write your answers in the comment section of the video. Thank you. The link of the Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box that is accessible by all the users that is iOS and Android users. The link of the Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writers at gmail.com. Thank you.